Hi, people of America. I'm here to introduce you to this wonderful video on how to write an essay. I always thought that the purpose of a five paragraph essay was to clearly organize your thoughts into an easy to write and easy to read essay. I think writing is useful because it's a form of good communication. Right now, I'm communicating to you by talking. Writing is a great form of communication and where you can organize your thoughts. Let's say later on in life you want to make a complaint. For instance, you go to the mall and you buy a camera and it's defective. So eventually you might think of writing a letter of complaint. And a five paragraph format is an excellent way to do that. Of course, there are drawbacks to writing a five paragraph essay. First and foremost, because of the strict structure, you're going to have to take more time planning. Sometimes students will say that it restricts creativity in your writing. And lastly, some say that the five paragraph essay is seldom found outside the classroom. However, Gina, you only use it in life as much as you allow yourself to. If you want to use it and think about it, you're going to use it. If you just ignore it, you're not. I see your point, Graham. I guess there are some good sides to a five paragraph essay. Right. All those drawbacks are fine and dandy, but a five paragraph essay is still crucial. It's like when you first learned to play basketball. Oh, I see what you're getting at. Right. You can't just join a basketball team and start playing. First, you gotta learn how to shoot. The same principles can apply to writing. You're probably better off learning the five paragraph format first. This way, you can become a basic, effective communicator. Once you have the basics down, you can move on to more creative writing. You can write a novel or anything you want. And you know, Gina, this five paragraph essay format is not only useful in history class, but in your other classes as well. And even when you get into college, you'll be so happy that you have learned this. And you'll find that some teachers and professors don't even care what your point of view is. They're just looking to see if you can organize your thoughts and get your point across. Time to take a look at the basic structure of an essay. Your essay should always have five paragraphs. Your first paragraph is your introduction. Second, third, and fourth paragraphs are your body paragraphs. And lastly, you have your conclusion paragraph. This sums everything up. It's your fifth and final paragraph. Now that you have a basic idea of essay structure, it's time to take a look at outlining. We're going to go over a few reasons why you should outline. The first thing you should do when you get an essay prompt is read it several times and make sure you understand the question. Outlining provides you with a road map. You don't want to just get in a car and start driving around. You want to have a destination and know how to get there. So here's what you might want to do. The first thing I always do before I outline is make sure I have yellow paper. It's easy on the eyes. The first thing I do when I outline is think about all the facts that I know pertaining to the question and write them down. What I try and do is figure out two opposing viewpoints. Well, the next thing I like to do is come up with a solid thesis statement. That's a good idea, because a thesis is the most important thing. You want to make sure you have it done earlier on so you're not wasting your time. After formulating my thesis, I move on to my subtopics. I pick three good arguments that support my thesis. Yeah, me too. And, and once I have those three subtopics, I like to organize them in a certain order. I put my strongest subtopic first, my weakest subtopic second, and my second strongest last. Nice.
The first, and arguably the most important paragraph in the essay, is the introduction. Let's take a look. Hey, you guys. I'm so lost. How do I write a good intro paragraph? Okay, what do you guys say? I pull up a chair and just... You guys tell me. Alright, do it up. Feed me. Your opening sentence is really important. But you also got to remember to funnel down. And lastly, you need a really strong thesis statement. So what's up with this opening sentence business? Well, your opening sentence really has to hook the reader and get them interested in reading your essay. But at the same time, you've got to remember to keep it broad. You can't start too detailed. And remember that someone's going to read this essay, and it'll probably be Mr. P, so make sure it's interesting. All right, sweet. So what about funneling down? Your opening sentence already started out broad. So as you go down your intro, you've got to continuously be narrowing down to your main topic. But you have to make sure it's not too long or too short. It's got to be just right. After you funnel down, the thesis statement is where you take your position in the essay. Make sure that you directly answer the essay question. And remember, this is where you tell your reader what your position is on the question. Your thesis is your last sentence of your paragraph. And make sure that it includes all three subtopics. Alright, cool guys. I think I got it. Alright, so first you have to have a strong opening sentence. So second, you have to make sure it funnels down. And lastly, third, you have to have a strong thesis statement, which is probably the most important. Alright, thanks guys, I'm out of here. The middle portion of your essay contains the body paragraphs. Let's take a look. It's time to write a body paragraph. How do I start? Hey you down there, you gotta always remember the basic structure. Look at your introduction paragraph. Remember, your thesis statement is the last sentence of your opening paragraph. Your thesis contains your three subtopics. All you have to do is pick one of those subtopics. So which one are you going to write about? Subtopic one, two, or three? Um, I think I should use my best argument first. So give me subtopic number one. Okay, here it comes. Cool. Now that I got my subtopic, I can start writing my first body paragraph. Let's talk about something cool. Body paragraph! Yeah! Now, the first sentence in any subtopic has got to be your topic sentence. You're right. That's got to be worded almost exactly like your thesis statement. Right, and it's good to use transition words like first or primarily. Oh, to help it flow. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Now, the next couple sentences should contain facts that pertain to your argument. Right, but you just can't have all facts. You have to also include analysis. Yeah, and that analysis has to go back to your thesis statement. So you have to tie it together. Mm -hmm.
Wow, this is making sense. But what do I end my paragraph with? You should use a good recap that kind of ties everything together and reminds the reader of your thesis argument. So again, you want to use the exact wording. And it could even be used as a transition to your next paragraph. Wow, that sounds like a really important sentence. It is. Oh my god, we're going to be late for class! Whoa! Man, that was a great conversation, huh? Yeah. Alright, I guess I'll put the secret message in its spot. Alright guys, let's get to class. See you guys at lunch. Okay folks, it's time to sum everything up in your conclusion paragraph. Hey, hey, you guys, I need some help. Dude, I've already helped you out with this, man. Why don't you have these guys help you? I'm out of here. What? Hey, this camera's following me around everywhere. I think it wants me to do something. What? Yeah, it keeps following me around. I think it wants me to, like, learn how to write a conclusion paragraph. So, can you help me out so I can get rid of this damn camera? Well, in your conclusion paragraph, you gotta restate your thesis statement. Isn't this where you make, like, your final argument? Exactly. But you don't want to put any new ideas into your final argument. Right. I should just restate my thoughts that I already had in my essay. You know, there are several things students want to avoid in the conclusion paragraph. Exactly. One mistake students make is that they add new facts to their conclusion paragraph. Who's this guy? You don't want to bring any new thoughts or ideas to your conclusion paragraph. Oh, yeah. All right. All right, so let me get this right. All you want to do is reinforce and remind the reader of what your thesis statement is. Exactly. This isn't rocket science. Not only should you mention your thesis statement, but you should also include the three subtopics you've used to prove your thesis statement. Finally, you want to think about that last sentence. Right. You want to leave the reader with a good impression. I think it's finally all coming together now. So in a conclusion paragraph, you always got to restate your thesis statement. Don't forget to attach those three subtopics. And make sure you don't ramble on. And don't put thoughts in your conclusion that you didn't put earlier in your essay. Hey, we worked hard. It's break time. It's time for some Welch's grape juice. Mr. P's favorite drink. It's so refreshing. Hey look, the camera's leaving. Looks like we figured out this conclusion business. Alright. Do's and don'ts. There's some stuff you should do in an essay, and there's some stuff you should not do. Pay attention. Right now, we're going to bombard you with some do's and don'ts for your essay writing. So pay attention. Always stick to a five paragraph format. Don't write three or don't write seven paragraphs. Write five. Always read the question thoroughly. Don't go off topic. Make sure you answer the question directly. Make sure to have your thesis and three subtopics. Don't just ramble on about anything. Make sure you have an outline and stick to it. 
Once you start writing your essay, make sure to budget your time. No personal narratives. That one's worth saying again. No personal narratives. Those are personal narratives. Don't use these. Here's an example of why personal narratives should be avoided. I'm going to tell you why Rembrandt is the best painter. Most of the words in this sentence are pointless. You don't need to use words like I or I'm going to explain because we already know that it's your paper and it's your thoughts because your name's on the paper. Instead, try something like Rembrandt is the best painter because So remember kids, Mr. P's big on this personal narrative business, so don't mess up. Make the reader want to read your paper. Someone's going to sit down and read your essay, and it's probably going to be Mr. P. You might not think of it this way, but your writing represents you, so try your best. Here's a no-brainer. Don't use incorrect information. If you're not required to type your essay, make sure to write as neat as possible. Don't try to be cute and use words like boom. Let's say you misspell a word or there's something in your paper that you don't want Mr. P to read. Simply draw a line through it once and then put brackets on each end. This saves Mr. P a lot of time and makes your essay easier to read if you have to write it out. Don't use slang. Like, the Germans were pissed off. Instead, use, the Germans were angry. Don't use cliches. You know, cheesy things like, what goes around comes around. Don't use them. Always take a stand. Don't be neutral or indecisive with the question. Be sure to stick to your viewpoint throughout the entire essay. Don't pose questions in your essay, such as, what started World War II? Well, I'm going to tell you. Think about how ridiculous that sounds. Just don't do it. It's a no-brainer. Make sure you do remember this stuff. And make sure you don't forget this stuff. Now, here's some random information with regards to your essay. Check it out. Hi, I'm a former student from Mr. P's class. I feel that most students grasp the body paragraph, the conclusion, but the thing that is not taught is what to put in an essay. Some students read the question, they understand it, but they don't know how to address the question. What I've done is put on a little flash animation. This animation provides sample questions and examples on how to address a standard essay question. So if you think you need help with an essay, check out this website right here. You know, Gina, essay questions come in many different forms. Right, and one of the most common asks you to assess the validity of a statement. True. Check this out. The essay prompt is... Assess the validity of the statement. Donuts are the best breakfast. Like all essay prompts, there are two positions you can take with this prompt. You can agree or you can disagree. Now we all know that donuts aren't the healthiest breakfast food. However, people really do enjoy them. So for the sake of time, we're going to write this essay as if we agree with the statement. 
Here's what we came up with after we outlined. Where did he come from? It has been said that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Notice the opening sentence. It hooks the reader because it's a familiar concept and it starts broad. This allows the writer to funnel down. Even though the opening sentence was broad, notice that it was still on the same subject. It didn't go into anything about baseball or dragons or the moon. So stay on topic. Notice how each sentence gradually funnels down to the thesis statement. In today's fast-paced world, the demand of their daily schedule prevent many people from putting serious thought into their breakfast. However, there is a food source that meets these demands. The reader should feel the intro paragraph funneling down. The funneling process does a good job of leading to the thesis, which directly addresses the question. Indeed, donuts are the best form of breakfast, as manifested by their efficiency, their ability to hit the spot, and their affordability. We even reiterated the essay prompt in our thesis statement. Donuts are the best breakfast. We even attached our subtopics to the end of the thesis. Right. Efficiency, ability to hit the spot, and affordability. Those are our three subtopics. All right, guys, I'm going down in the body paragraphs, because that's what we have to do next. All right. Hey, Azil, you down there yet? Yeah, I'm ready. Throw me that first subtopic. All right, Azil, we're going to send you down efficiency, because it's the first one we mentioned in our intro paragraph. And it's our best argument. Here it comes. Cool. Now I can start my first body paragraph. First, donuts are the best breakfast food because they are efficient. Notice how they use the word first as a good transition word. It also zones in the reader as to see what paragraph they're on. We also mentioned the keyword of our subtopic from the thesis, efficient. In addition, we added some facts to our paragraph. Many people start their day in a hurry. A recent survey showed that over 60% of high school students skip breakfast due to their lack of time. Because of their efficiency, donuts provide a solution to this problem. In addition, most people that are on the run will simply skip over breakfast opportunities because of their morning time factor. Once again, donuts supply an efficient answer to this dilemma. Not only do we add facts, but we analyze them leading back to the thesis. Therefore, the efficiency of donuts proves their superiority over other breakfast foods. That's a look at the first body paragraph. Now apply the same principle to the other two. I know you're bored out of your mind, but here's a quick recap. Boys and girls, I'm the recap specialist. I'm here to wrap up this video. Let's review the main parts of an essay. Remember, the structure of your essay is really, really important. And without it, your essay will crumble like a house of cards. Recap Specialist, checking in with some more information. Let's talk about the introduction paragraph. It's probably the most important paragraph of your essay. Make sure you have your thesis and your three subtopics. Because without them, it's like running around without a head. Recapping it 
up here with some body paragraph info. Your body paragraph should always introduce your subtopic. It should also include some facts about your subtopic. Then mix it up by analyzing your facts. And lastly, make sure to connect your subtopic back to your thesis. Here's some stuff to remember about your conclusion. Make sure to restate your thesis and wrap everything up. Let's go over do's and don'ts. Pay attention to these, or your score is going to get bombarded. Don't use personal narratives such as I, my, me, you, mine, our, we, your. If you need to watch this video again, just stop by Mr. P's class after school and pop in the video. That's right, just come by after school and watch the video as many times as you need to. And you can also get information from Mr. P's website. Let's take a look at outlining. Like my friend told you earlier in the video. Outlining provides you with a road map. And if you don't have a road map... Your essay's gonna be hurting. So make sure to outline, kids, and your essay will be on the road to success. Essay, 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 students should use a five paragraph essay format because it's easy and it, yeah, I knew I could. <laughs> Writing a five-paragraph essay is useful in kids' lives because it's a way of being a good communicator. Right now, I'm communicating to you, but I'm not communicating. <laughs> Damn it! That's so good. After reading it several times, and you make sure you understand what the hell the question is asking, you want to outline. After formulating a thesis, you got to move on to your subtopics. Okay, now the next couple sentences should contain, contain facts that we're going to do this over. <laughs> exactly. What the heck? You should have... Uh, no. Hey, it's break time. It's time for some Welch's grape juice juice. Mr. <laughs> yeah. It's time for some Welch's grape juice. Mr. P's favorite drink. It's so refreshing. Dude. I've already helped you out with this, man. Why don't you have these guys help you? I'm out of here. What? 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 All right, sweet. Wait. What? Oh, okay. Nice. Oh, yeah. Right now, we're going to come. So don't use. Yeah, I don't even know. Sorry. <laughs> Essay questions come in many forms. Right, and one of the most common is where it asks you to assess the validity of this statement. Right, check this out. Now we all know. Even though the opening sentence was broad, notice that it was still on the same subject. We didn't use, I don't know, I don't know. it didn't go into anything about baseball or dragons or the moon. We even attached our subtopics to the end of the thesis. Right, efficiency, affordability, and I missed of the order. 
In addition, most people that are in a hurry will skip. Now yeah, let's start from in. In addition, most people that are on the run. In addition, most people that are on the run simply skip over breakfast. Other breakfast. God. In addition, most people that are on the run will simply skip over breakfast opportunities because of their morning time factor. Because of their morning. In addition, most people that are on the run will simply skip breakfast opportunities because of their morning time factor. In addition, we added some facts to our paragraph. Not only did we add facts, but we analyzed stuff. You got both. You're not in the. That's good as well as his head down. <laughs> Make sure you have. <laughs> Pay attention to these, or your score is gonna get bombarded. Or your score is gonna get bombarded. Pay attention to these. <laughs> Pay attention to these. <laughs> Pay attention to these, or your score is going to get bombarded. Don't use personal narratives, such as I, my, <laughs> so good. such as I, my, me, your, <laughs> such as I, my, me, our, your, mine. <laughs> Such as I, my, we, you, our. <laughs> That's right. Just come on by, watch the video as many times as you like until you get the information. But if you don't have a road map...